You right there ladies and gents, how's it going? Welcome to my first look, first thoughts review of the Aprilia Touareg 660. Now this is a fantastic motorcycle, it's brand new out and uh, I'm superbly impressed with it so far. Now in this video I'm going to give you my thoughts on how it rides on the road, on dual carriageways and uh, equivalent motorways and also out on the green lanes like we are on here in uh, beautiful Surrey <laughs> up at Leith Hill. Now uh, I've just got this motorcycle, it is mine, it's not a review bike, a demo bike or anything like that, it's, it's my bike to do what I want with it. So I'm blooming well going to go and do that. I bought this motorcycle so I could do a little bit of green laning on, travel around the countryside, maybe get abroad on it and uh, go exploring and exploring properly. I'm going to uh, pull up in a bit once we get to a different car park and I'll give you a little walk around the motorcycle um, but in the meantime let's see what this thing's like out on a little bit of a green lane shall we and keep that from down. okay so we're gonna head off green lane in now let's just flip this into the uh, correct mode off-road mode rear ABS disabled and let's crack on now last time I came along this lane uh, it was very wet and there was some reasonably deep puddles but it's got quite good drainage around here so I'm imagining that the puddles will have calmed down a little bit well let's get stood up I'm in second gear at the moment um, and it chugs along okay absolutely fine at this sort of pace which is uh, 20 mile an hour just about it chugs along quite nicely in first gear as well so I think they've actually they're pretty have actually geared this bike quite nicely for trail riding as well as those people who are a little bit faster who are able to uh, put the hammer down a little bit more now yeah last time I come down here all this was all across the whole of the lane um, and the bike took it in its stride it's kind of almost a shame that it's all uh, drained away now because uh, <laughs> it's quite good fun although that one there is a, a little bit of a, a bath I'm not taking that lane or that part of the lane it's not designed for motorcycles that's for four by fours to uh, get drowned in now this one's quite deep on the right hand side uh, even when it's like this it can be quite deep so i'm staying to the left side there on this bike when i get more confident on it i might well use the right hand side as you can see i'm not a helpful lever kind of rider i tend to just enjoy the trails enjoy the beauty around me um, but this motorcycle it feels like an enduro bike it really does obviously a heavy one <laughs> Um, that's not really too noticeable until things get a little bit sticky or you kind of get a little bit out of your depth on the technicality sides of things but for all this all pretty easy stuff along here it's absolutely dandy and I know with these tyres fitted I'll be able to do far more on this bike than I would have been able to with the standard tyres and uh, again just to emphasize it's really nice that it has the tubeless system so that you can uh, plug up punctures and stuff if you get any rather than having your day ruined or having to faff around trying to change inner tubes as I get more used to the bike I will ride a little bit harder more difficult stuff um, so you might well see that when I do the full review of this bike once I've had it a season but in the meantime you're getting this <laughs> now this little lane here this part of this lane here is quite mild mannered um, but there is a rut that you can't see under the leaves here um, and it can knock you off course a little bit but it's so beautiful down here isn't it, it really is, it's really pretty it's all easy from here on in down to the end um, but there is some big rocks and stuff I got one flung up at it last time I was down here and they made a right racket um, didn't damage anything there anyway we're just at the end of that lane um, so we're going to switch back to me parked up and I'll talk to you a little bit more about the bike so you've seen what the bike was like out on a green lane um, it's pretty damn competent it's far more competent than I am at the moment certainly on a, a larger bike I'm used to a, a Beta 390 enduro bike and uh, yeah this one's a little bit heavier than that but it's an awful lot lighter than the Moto Guzzi V85 which I got to this to replace when I got the bike I did spec it um, with some accessories now none of them have arrived yet from Aprilia uh, I've been told that they will be turning up within the month which uh, isn't really a bother for me but it would have been nice to have had the crash protection 
on the bike before I picked it up because I knew I was going to be taking it in the dirty stuff. Now we've got a glorious day today but when I picked the bike up we had 50 metres visibility in thick fog and uh, the green lanes were full of water. Now today they are not quite so full of water <laughs> but they're still an awful lot of fun um, so I really enjoyed throwing that around today. We are in the uh, aftermath of Storm Eunice and the other ones that happened to the UK recently and uh, it means that an awful lot of our lanes around here are unusable because we've got trees down all the way across them um, and uh, I previously recorded this video and every single lane that we got to we found trees down so uh, I know this one's clear which is why I chose this one and we've also got a beautiful beautiful viewpoint for me to uh, record this little bit of of the footage so I'm quite happy to be up here in this glorious blue sunshine oh, I can't wait for spring to hit properly <laughs> so some of the accessories that I ordered for the bike are the engine bars like I say I've also ordered the rack so I can fit luggage to the bike I haven't done the side panniers um, and all that stuff just just the rear rack because then I can fit a top box to it I'll probably get some soft luggage for the bike for the sides for when I want to go and do motor camping and uh, explore adventures and stuff like that yeah uh, hard hard boxes are great but I think on an adventure bike soft ones are probably actually more practical overall so yes you've got the rack coming um, I've also ordered some heated grips uh, I'm hoping I'm not going to need them for six months once once they arrive because uh, hopefully spring and summer will be coming along quite quickly uh, but they'll be nice to have in the winter and certainly at the moment I could really do with them because although it's a beautiful day it is still a little bit chilly out because I'm a little bit of a short ass, I'm five foot six and uh, I've got an inseam of 29 inches uh, this bike was a little bit daunting for me to buy uh, especially without having ridden it and uh, I was very worried that it was going to be too much for me not just in power but in size and I struggled to get on the bike even in the showroom on nice flat ground but actually I find it a lot easier to get on and off the motorcycle out here on the lanes where it's rough which is actually where it's more important and getting on and off the bike on tarmac I can just stand on the foot peg so that's less of an issue but since getting the bike and actually having ridden it a little bit the suspension softened up a little and uh, now actually the seats uh, a nice little place for me it's not brilliant I could do with losing a little bit and that's why I've also ordered the lower seat although there's no sign of that actually being possible at the moment from uh, Aprilia which is a bit of a shame and a bit of a, an annoyance for me so that new comfort seat the lower comfort seat is not low comfort it's a lower seat that's comfort um, so it should maintain the same comfort of this but actually be 20 centimeters lower and that will make my life a little bit easier both on and off-road um, and hopefully give my confidence a bit of a boost uh, like it did when I lowered my beta enduro bike if it doesn't turn up it's not the end of the world I haven't paid for it I've just ordered it uh, and I can manage with it as it is but I am on on tiptoes uh, on the bike on one foot um, which is a little bit iffy when you need to get a foot down so if you are short of stature like myself you're probably going to want to know if you can get on and off the bike okay now like I say um, on tarmac I would uh, stand on the foot peg and swing a leg over and then wobble the bike across so it's upright and then I can flick the stand up which isn't too much of a problem but when we're in uneven ground now the suspension softened down a little bit I can actually just get on it by just swinging my leg uh, I needed to limber up a little bit when I first got the bike but as you can see um, I've got one foot down and I'm on tiptoes but all I have to do is just slide half a butt cheek off the saddle and I can flat foot this on one foot and it's actually quite manageable like this I've just got to get used to the extra weight of this versus my uh, beta enduro bike so getting on and off is, is pretty manageable for someone my height if you've got shorter legs you might well struggle a little bit but uh, the lower seat might help you out there or maybe get yourself some step up boots I know Daytona do some which give you an extra half inch or inch or something like that but if you're a normal height person unlike me uh, you'll have no problem at all getting on and off this motorcycle and you'll probably find it very very handy out on the green lane so in a second I'll do a little walk around of the motorcycle so you can see it from all angles and all that sort of stuff but let's get the engine started shall we and I'll show you the dashboard and stuff like that as well So simple turn of the ignition key, none of this keyless malarkey that others seem to be wanting to do. I hate that idea, who wants keyless? Well let's swap sides of the bike. You've got a combined uh, engine stop and engine start, so it's just a dab of that. 
and as you can see at the moment on the dashboard we're in explore mode let's just give it a little I'm still running it in so I ain't going to give you loads of revs um, but yeah it's 163 miles on the clock and uh, this is the explore mode now I've not looked at all the modes on this bike to know exactly what they do through the manual but it's got an explore mode it's got an urban mode it's got an individual mode and then it's got an off-road mode the off-road mode disables the rear ABS the explore mode I think is one for just general riding which gives you everything as you would want it and I think the urban mode uh, softens the uh, power delivery just a little bit but still gives you everything else uh, but I haven't read it up on that so do correct me if I'm wrong just drop it down in the comments if you know better than me on that I will read the manual at some point um, but I've been too busy enjoying the bike to do that at the moment but anyway it's quite simple you've got a mode button here so we're in explore mode there and uh, if I just tap the button once it goes to urban if I tap it again it goes to off-road rear ABS disabled and then if I tap it again, it goes to individual, which is a mode that I can customise myself. And then back to explore. You can do that on the fly, which I think is really awesome. There's uh, a lot of bikes these days, you can only change the modes um, where it affects the ABS when you're at a standstill. To do this on the fly, you've just got to pull the clutch in and that will then enable the mode that you've selected, uh, which uh, is grand. I really like that feature. It means that when you get to a green lane after doing a little bit of tarmac, you can just flip it into off-road mode and off you go. Awesome stuff. Now also on the display, we've got the ambient temperature, the time, uh, odometer, which is controlled by the up arrows on the joystick there with your fuel speed and time and all that sort of stuff um, trip I haven't done a full tank on this yet I'm halfway through this one and I've got nearly 80 miles on the clock uh, I am riding it gently because I am running it in so uh, I can't tell you exactly how much fuel economy it does I will do a full-on review of this bike once I've had it a little while once it's fully run in possibly after a season of riding because then I will know the bike an awful lot better um, so the dashboard is pretty good, pretty comprehensive. Like I said, I haven't fully explored that yet, so I think there's possibly other views I can have on there. Um, I'm not too fussed on, on all that stuff. Down the bottom here, you've got your connectivity. Uh, so if you're using the, uh, on the motor Gutsies, it's called the MIA. I'm not sure what it's called on the Aprita. It could be the same thing, MIA, which allows you to connect it to your phone and have turn-by-turn -turn, uh, sat-nav directions and stuff like that, which is handy. But actually I'd rather have a full-on sat-nav or use my phone properly as a sat-nav if I was going to do that because I don't find turn-by-turns as handy as actually seeing the map and seeing where you're going and all that sort of stuff. Um, but for some people they might like that because it saves them having to have a quad lock phone mount which I've got here um, or uh, mounting a sat-nav onto the sat-nav bar. So uh, I get some people might like that. It's also got that uh, little... Uh, icon there which is for your helmet to helmet audio so if you've got a passenger or um, you're connected via a scene or something like that to other riders that allows you to uh, um, see what they are up to out um, not see what they're up to listen to what they're up to out on the bike um, so you can also control your music and stuff through it as well but I find all that sort of stuff if you've got a decent scene or something you can do that all through the headset and uh, I don't know if it's something that you really want to spend the money on but up to you um, we all have different requirements for our motorcycles don't we like I say I fitted a quad lock to it camera mounts don't count so don't worry about them uh, I really like the quad lock mounts this one's the bicycle stem mount and it fits quite nicely there wobbles around a little bit that's how I had it mounted on my motor Gutsy when I had that um, I might well go to a different mount for it I might well get something that mounts up on there I don't know yet I haven't decided um, but yeah I do like the quad lock mount others are available so like I say I've ordered some accessories for it I've got the heated grips on order the crash bars the lower seat and the rear rack I've also ordered a centre stand for it which would be quite handy um, if you get a puncture out on the trails or just chain maintenance because I had a shaft drive bike before it didn't really matter on the chain maintenance side of things um, but uh, it did have tube tyres on my Moto Guzzi V8 whereas this has got tubeless which is quite nice you can just plug them at the side of the road if you do get a puncture unfortunately get a puncture um, so having a center stand will be quite handy that I do think will give me some uh, if not not much extra engine protection and suspension linkage protection from uh, if I go over any logs or anything like that but I don't know how that's going to work out one thing I did do from new I never rode the original tires at all if the Pirelli uh, Scorpion rallies I got rid of them straight away uh, I've got Motors Tractionator adventure tires fitted to this they're more of a uh, dual sport tire they're better off-road um, yes there's possibly some compromise on tarmac compared to the Pirelli's but 
for me this motorcycle is a 50 50 motorcycle it's a proper dual sport for me to go adventuring anywhere and be able to hit the dirt once i get to those places possibly even get to those places via the dirt <laughs> you never know hopefully some things like that will happen while i own this motorcycle because i do want to spend a lot of time off-road on this bike i quite like the fact that it came with a sump guard but actually let's switch cameras so you're on my helmet camera here um, something i don't like about this sump guard is one the oil filter has still got quite a lot of exposure to the elements there um i don't know what that is and if it should be there like that that's a bit grubby um but also it's a two-piece thing so this bit here isn't supported and uh, you hit something that's going to bash into the exhaust pipe you hit something hard enough it's potentially going to damage your exhaust pipe and then maybe even your oil filter which could leave you stranded somewhere so as soon as they become available that's one of the first things i'm going to be doing for this bike is buying myself an aftermarket proper decent strong uh some card for it because i don't think this really is that fit for purpose i might be over thinking it i might be thinking it's all going to be a problem when it isn't but i'd rather have that peace of mind that knowledge that what i've got on there is actually going to protect the bike i like the fact that it comes with a low mug guard i actually fitted an aprilia mug guard to my moto guzzi v85 um, just to give me a little bit of extra protection and as you can see it sort of does a reasonable job here if I wasn't going to be going off-road quite so much, I would probably put an extender on that. Um, but uh, as I am, it does enough of a job. And I'm hoping that whatever guard I get for that will actually come up a little bit higher anyway to protect the oil filter more. And then I won't need a longer front mark guard anyway. So currently I still have the standard exhaust pipe on the bike. I think the bike sounds amazing. You get an awful lot of induction coming from the airbox on the bike, uh, which sounds fantastic when you're riding. I don't know how well the helmet audio picks that up though, so uh, um, you might not be able to enjoy the noise that this bike makes, but I certainly can hear a fantastic bike throbbing beneath me, and I really, really like that. Um, and when you're out on the trails, it is nice having a fully road legal exhaust pipe because it gives the horses and the dog walkers and horse people and ramblers and all that less ammunition to have a complain and a moan not that the horse riders around here do that they're absolutely lovely i, I absolutely love all the users of the leith hill lanes um they generally generally all get along just fine and dandy uh, and <laughs> long may that continue which is why i'm very tempted to keep it standard because like i say when you're off on the lanes you don't really want to be obnoxious or, or rude or offensive to any of the other people out using them but when i'm on tarmac i want to hear the bike a bit more and i'm sure the camera does too you guys do too so i don't know i don't know it looks quite neat um i might see if there's a lighter version of it sort of a titanium thing or something or other that uh gives the noise a little bit deep a little bit of deepness when you're up in the revs which i'll not be doing when i'm off road i'll be down lower in the rev range um so it's more fun for me when i'm out on the tarmac and uh less annoying for the horsey people and dog walkers etc out on the lanes so that's what we'll try and do if i can um so i'll keep my ear to the ground on all the forums and facebook pages and try and uh, see what is the option of choice for people i know there are a few exhaust pipes out for it at the moment but i think a lot of them are like full systems and they're decats and stuff like that and i don't really think i want to go that route because the moment you decat it does make the bike an awful lot more noisy um i'm rambling now though and talking about things that aren't a first look at a motorcycle as we see it in front of us that's the future we'll have to think about that okay so you've seen me out on a green lane with this bike uh right let's get out on a dual carriageway or equivalent motorway type sort of speeds um, so you can hear what this bike sounds like uh with wind noise and things like that just be mindful that if you hear a lot of wind noise it is because my crash helmet is noisy it's a carbon fiber jobby and it's lightweight it's it's quite flimsy it's, it's a safe helmet but it's it wasn't designed to be quiet it was designed to be light and when you've got all this camera gear stuck on it it's nice to have a lighter helmet as a base um so uh, yeah let's get out on the bike and do some uh, higher speed stuff out on a dual carriageway or motorway whichever i come to first and i'll talk about how it feels if you were going to be traveling some distance that way right now we're out on a dual carriageway it's a 60 70 mile an hour limit for motorcycles and uh with the rev range i've got i can get up to 80 miles an hour on this bike or thereabouts or just over um so 6000 rpm on the clocks not calibrated officer is about 80 miles an hour now i'm getting a lot of wind noise and one of the reasons for that is this my crash helmet it's a carbon fiber jobby and it is very very noisy um, it's lightweight which means it hasn't got a huge amount of uh, noise dampening uh, 
one. So it's not a perfect crash over for it. And here's something I'm looking to change. But I'm not getting any buffeting from the wind. Uh, um, that seems to be all coming up through the peak of the windscreen there. And it goes through the gap underneath the peak, mainly. Which stops the turbulence that I was getting on the Moto Guzzi. But it is possibly adding a little bit of noise, making this vibrate around a little. I don't know. If I get a different crash arm, it'll have probably a more stronger peak, because that will be one of the things I'll be looking for. And that might stop the vibration so much, which will hopefully quiet things down a little bit. If I stand up, that noise coming into my crash arm has calmed right down. Uh, but you're not really going to be standing up at 70 miles an hour. Um, on a motorcycle really realistically there we go put the headlight on high beam again <laughs> as soon as we're out i may as well go to uh, rikers cafe and get myself a brew um, but yeah we're on to a 50 mile an hour limit on this road here so i'll uh, i'll not continue with uh, this high speed dual carriageway thoughts and stuff so let's go back to the bike over at Leith Hill. So we've seen how this bike is out on a green lane, out on dual carriageway and also uh, I've given you a little bit of a walk around the motorcycle so you can uh, see how it looks in the flesh up close and personal. The last thing for me to do is take this out on some road, on some just regular back roads which is the kind of roads that I'll be riding this on when it's on tarmac in my dreams that's that's how I want this bike to be I don't really want it on on uh, high speed roads like motorways and dual carriageways they're no fun on a motorcycle to be honest they're not really any fun on a car but they are a necessity so it is worth knowing how well a bike like this will handle on them um, but yeah what we want to know is what this is like on an A road or a little back B road which is probably where the majority of you will be riding this bike again bear in mind I am running this bike in and it hasn't got standard tyres. These tyres are 50-50s, proper 50-50s, as opposed to the more um, 70 or 80, uh, 20, 30s that you get with the bike as standard. So I can't hustle this around quite as much as you might be able to yours. Um, and also, I might not be as good a rider as you. So <laughs> please bear that in mind. And let's see what this bike is like out on the twisty back roads of Sussex and Surrey. Right, so now we've come off the green lane and we're on tarmac now. We're on uh, back B roads and stuff like that. The beautiful country lanes of Surrey and Sussex. I love it down this part of the world. This is, like I said before, Leith Hill and it's beautiful around here. So we're in off-road mode. We just want to switch that back to uh, explore mode, I believe. So clutch in and there we go push the button a couple of times and you get into the individual mode and now it's good to go we've got abs back on the rear wheel and we've got uh, our full throttle response and all that sort of stuff in my review i will go more into detail what the power modes and the uh, wheel control modes do uh, i'm just not that familiar with the bike yet to know if they make a huge amount of difference or what have you um, so that's to be seen in the full review later on in the year i always find it quite mad that you get review channels reviewing a motorcycle that they've only just got that day um, because although you can get a feel for how a bike handles you can't know how a bike handles um, and how it's going to be over a period of time which is why I like these first looks um, but they're not the best for finding out fully about a motorcycle yeah you really need someone who's had the bike for at least a couple of weeks before they can do a decent review on it um, channels like lamb chop rides i think he gets the bikes for a long enough period of time to uh, put in a decent review same as uh, spicy 110 um, because now he's reviewing the bigger bikes too uh, i'm not meaning to name drop there i just uh, they're, they're people who i enjoy watching for bike reviews so if you haven't heard of them i'll uh, if i remember i'll put links to both their channels down below um, Spicy doesn't just do bike reviews though, so uh, there's lots of other stuff on his channel, so you have to search for his bike reviews, um, whereas Lamb Chops does more bike reviews. And he's actually reviewed this, so it uh, be interesting to compare our thoughts on it. So getting the sensible speeds all within the speed limit, this bike is wonderful, it really is, and even with the more knobbly tyres that are fitted to the bike, it just it handles these B roads no problem at all. Um, I'm sure if I had to slam on the anchors, I'd probably want a little bit more uh, tarmac grip than I get with these, but then the roll is reversed when we're out on, on the dirt where I'd rather have these than the tarmac style tyres. So. <laughs> It's, it's all a compromise, isn't it? It's all a compromise. So if country B roads are your thing and your green laning isn't, 
with the standard tyres, this bike will be right up your street. It handles these little lanes just so nicely. Um, and it puts you up nice and high so you can see the hedges. The seat is really, really comfortable. The riding position sitting down is great. Um, when I first got the bike, I found the bars a little bit higher than I'm used to. And I guess that's a compromise the bike has made so it fits taller people as well as shorter ones. And also so it's probably a little bit more comfortable when you are venturing off-road standing up. But yeah, it's something that I've got the muscle memory for now. My shoulders have sort of just gone, okay, yeah, this is where the new riding position is. And uh, they've just got used to the extra work that they had to put in to start with. And um, yeah, I love the riding position now. I think it, it's fantastic. The knee bend that I've got to uh, hip foot ratio is quite comfortable. Um, I don't know, I might think about getting slightly higher pegs for it, but I don't know if I need to or not. Uh, it's quite nice having that extra leg room. It actually feels like the foot pegs are closer on this than they were on my V85 TT to the saddle, but I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, it just, yeah, it, it, it feels a nicer position. I think it might be just because it's a narrower seat. And although it is a narrower seat, that doesn't mean it's less comfortable, or it doesn't seem to be so far. Longer journeys will prove exactly what it's like in the real world, um, but in the meantime, um, yeah, it seems absolutely a pleasure to sit on. I believe this does have self-cancelling indicators, but again, like the Moto Guzzi, they're not self-cancelling to stop you having to do that yourself. They're more for if you forget to cancel them, which is a nice touch, and it teaches you to actually push your buttons when you're supposed to and things like that. It stops us getting too lazy, doesn't it? Well, I think it takes about half a mile or something like that for them to actually switch themselves off. I'm very much looking forward to getting this bike fully run in so I can enjoy the rev range a little bit more. But down at the lower revs, where we're sitting at the moment, about three and a half, uh, 4,000 RPM, it's, it's, it feels very nice. Um, it doesn't feel like it's lacking in torque or anything like that. The engine sounds glorious as it purrs along and it's all very, very smooth. I feel like I'm running out of speed prematurely, but that is purely because I'm running it in at the moment. I've still got nearly 50% of the revs left to go on the engine. Um, from 6,000 up to 10,000 RPM, I've not explored any of that yet. But that will happen, that will happen. There is some niggles with the bike, and one of them, when I'm riding, is uh, this little switch here. It's the high beam light. Um, it sticks out a little bit, and it's the same on the Aprilia RS 660 and Tuono 660, although I didn't have that issue when I demoed the Tuono 660 for my review I did of that. Uh, but yeah, it, when you nudge it with your, your finger, which is what you're supposed to only have to do to turn it on, um, it flicks on really easily. And I don't want to be blinding people or thinking people thinking I'm flashing them with my lights um, when I'm just riding along randomly, changing gear. So yeah, I might follow that down a little bit. I don't know, or hopefully, more hopefully, I'll, I'll just get used to it. All right, so that's a A and B road stuff. All right, so let's have a quick look around the bike, shall we? I've shown you the dashboard, I've shown you the engine sounding, and I've pointed out a couple of little bits and bobs that I like, don't like, and stuff like that, or I might have done that in the future, depending on how this video edits together. But let's have a quick walk around the bike. It is kind of stuck against the fence there, sort of, um, so I haven't parked in the best place for this. Um, but it is a cracking motorcycle, it really is. I do want to get some suspension linkage for it, um, guards for it, which I'm hoping the bash plate will help out there, um, and the uh, centre stand once that fits. We'll see how that all works together. Um, but yeah, it's a cracking looking motorcycle. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with any ability, really, to strap any luggage to it until you get the rear racking. Uh, this is a tube here, and it's on both sides, so potentially you could get a... Um, a, uh, a ruck strap or something similar around that to be able to start wrapping something up but there's not really anything at the back here um, it would be nice if they put like extended lugs on these just so that then you could put your uh, uh, camping stuff on the back seat and strap it down onto that with a hook or something like that um, but there's nothing absolutely nothing on the back there uh, so that is something I really wish that they'd address on, a, on an adventure bike, is give you some way of strapping some luggage to it. I guess it just encourages you all to buy the racking, doesn't it? Which I have ordered. So uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a lovely looking motorcycle. I love the red, I love the attention to detail, I love this little beak here. Um, I love the, just the little flashes of decals and uh, um, just the whole styling. The motorcycle's actually been designed by 
uh, the same person that designed the Moto Guzzi V85 TT, my previous bike. And I think he really is onto something with this and that V85. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He's uh, designed a couple of very, very pretty motorcycles. Now this side of the bike is uh, not necessarily as interesting. Sorry, I'm walking under trees there, getting rattling off my helmet. Uh, it's just got a chain. Not much else on this side. You can get a quick shifter for it. I might well do that in the future. Apparently it's plug and play. So uh, we'll see if I do that or not. Uh, I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I might do that. Uh, as you can see also, the, cent uh, the side stand is quite a chunky item. It looks like it's going to be quite strong. And the bracketry for it all is on the foot peg mount. So if it does bend a little bit, you can change that whole unit, which I'm sure is going to be excessively expensive, but far cheaper than having a bent frame or anything like that. So I quite like that. Um, but yeah, it's nice that it's quite solid, so it looks like it can support your weight. These rubber inserts here, they come out, and that's something I will be doing at some point, which will give me a little bit more grip when my boots get wet and slippy on those teeth on the edge of the, uh, the foot pegs there comes with pinion pegs I probably will never take a passenger on this but it's nice to have them in case you want to it's nice that they've put a little attention to details on it like a nice little bendy lever there for if you do fall off in a, and uh, it comes down on this side that'll stop that snapping off so you'll still be able to change gear and get yourself home over on this side of the bike again you've got these rubber inserts which are nice for removing vibration when you're out on the tarmac but actually when you're on uh, more rougher stuff you might want them removed so we'll probably take that off again um, like on the other side Another nice attention to detail is on this. This is the road setup. It's just got a, a nice non-abrasive contact patch there. But if you flip that brake lever over, it's got a far more serrated side on the other side, which will grip into your boots an awful lot better. Um, so I quite like that. And that's again something I'll do. Just so you know, you've got your foot on the brake lever when you want to, uh, to do so, if you need to get that brake done when you've got wet feet. God, look at all these people coming past. <laughs> The brakes on this bike aren't the uh, strongest, um, but it does have twin discs on the front. Um, it's not that they're bad, they're just not strong. Um, and I think uh, once I get more used to the bike and the suspension and the way it travels around and stuff like that, I will find that a little bit better. I actually prefer a more progressive feel like this where you get more lever travel before you actually get um, to the bike point. It gives you more feel for what the wheel's doing. So for me, on the off-road stuff, I prefer this. But for the tarmac, you probably want something a bit more bitey. The rear brake is uh, not a lot to write home about. It works. Um, and on the road, you can never really tell how strong a rear brake is because the ABS interferes with how you're riding and stops you doing the stuff that would cause the wheel to lock up. But I could uh, quite easily switch into off-road mode and then see how well that locks up on the tarmac, um, doing cool skids and stuff for, and tricks to impress the peoples. <laughs> it is a beautiful bike. It is a beautiful engine. I'm so pleased with it. I really, really am. I think it's, I think it's a fantastic motorcycle and I'm dead chuffed with it. So I think you can possibly tell that I absolutely adore this bike. Um, it pretty much does what I want an adventure bike to do. And when I get up to the ABR rally uh, later on in the year, it will probably prove that quite nicely because you've got a 20 mile off road course up there as well as all the road stuff to get there. And I'll be able to find out just how well this bike handles distance. I do have some other longer trips planned in the future as well um, and uh, other adventures. And with the long time love affair I'm going to have with this motorcycle, there's bound to be some very awesome memories created for me. And for you guys, if you choose to join me on any of the, my future videos. I can't really say much more about the bike other than I think it is perfect for me. It might not be perfect for you if you are one of my previous uh, subscribers who subscribed for the Moto Guzzi stuff from the V85 TT. I'm sorry if this isn't your cup of tea. So uh, if you do need to stroll on, I'll see you later. Um, but I'd love you to stay around because we're going to have so much fun with this bike. And as you know, if you are already a subscriber, I've got lots of other motorcycles to get mucky on and to go out and have fun on. Um, yeah, I do track stuff with a Gixxer. I've got my Enduro bike, which I do a little bit harder green laning than I'm likely to be doing on this. Although not always, often it's, it's quite easy stuff. It's just a nice bike to ride them on. Um, and I've also got a very customised Moto Guzzi V7. And I've also just bought, because <laughs> I'm a bike floozy, a really awesome Honda CB100N, which is the bike I passed my test on 30 years ago. It's not the exact bike, but it, it's the bike I passed my test on. Um, so a bit of nostalgia for me there, and they'll be great fun on uh, little 
cups of coffee runs and stuff like that in my local area. Can't really say much more about this motorcycle right now. I haven't owned it long enough. I've done 160, 70 miles on the bike since getting it. Um, I'm loving every moment of that. And I do hope that if this is a motorcycle that you choose to get for yourself, that you enjoy it as much as, or almost as much as, because I want to have all the enjoyment as myself. Um, I think this is the bike of 2022. I really, really honestly do. Watch this space and we'll find out if it is. So anyway, if you like this video, if you like the Aprilia, if you like me, if you like a good biscuit, give this video a little thumbs up. And if you didn't, you can always give it a little thumbs down. That's fine. It's all cool. It's all cool in the school. And if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. It would be really awesome if you followed me along on my ventures with this bike and some of the stuff I do on my other motorcycles as well. Uh, I have such a laugh on the bikes and I've got a good crowd of mates that we ride all together with and uh, get up to mischief around the country. So um, it would be brilliant if you came and joined us for some more um, but anyway whatever you do please do drop down in the comments what you think of this bike whether you think it's a brilliant purchase or a, or a not so good purchase um, whether you're in a pretty fan whether you hate them whether you're a Moto Guzzi fan and you hate me <laughs> all that stuff let me know what you think and uh, yeah you ride safe take care and I shall catch you all in the next one bye bye for now keep that bike from Hey yo, know, you gotta keep that bike. Rubber side down.